The time has come to sharpen your query writing skills. Welcome to QuickBase Junkie. I help QuickBase builders learn fast to deliver more. In this video, I'll explain what a query is and take you through the basics for adding queries to your QuickBase apps that can be used in a variety of ways. Queries can be used in many different QuickBase locations to gather lists of records that can be displayed, such as in a report, processed, such as in a pipeline, or evaluated, such as in a formula. In this Query Writing 101 video, I'll be going over the basics, comparison operators, comparing multiple conditions, a few best practices, we'll look at different query examples by location, also go over some troubleshooting tips and additional resources. I'm willing to bet you've created more than one report with filters specifying which records you want the report to include. That filter, that's a query. When you build reports in QuickBase, you have an easy interface to construct your query, so you probably don't even think about it. Besides reports, queries can be used in a variety of locations, such as formula fields using the query function get records, pipeline search steps using the advanced query section, and API calls through the use of JSON, XML, or a URL string. A query string is composed of three parts, a field ID, an operator, and a value. This is how the query looks on a report filter. That field we're selecting there, well, rather than the name, we'll use the field ID or FID in our query, but it's basically referring to the same field. Next, we've got our operator. This is where we choose how we're comparing it to another field or another value. This is the same as our operator in our query string. The only difference here is we're using a standardized set of query operators and not the simplified dropdown. After that, we've got our value, the value that we're comparing to the original FID based on that operator. Along with these three components, they're constructed in a particular manner. The value itself is put into a set of single quotations and the operator is separated from the other two items with a set of periods and last, the whole string is put into a set of curly brackets. Let's see what this looks like for an actual query string. In this example, we want to say field ID 22 does not equal closed. Our query string will look just like this. In a set of those curly brackets, we start with the field ID number 22, then a period and our operator does not equal which is defined by X, E, X, all in caps, another period, and then in a set of those single quotations, the word closed. That's the basic construct of a query. Let's take a deeper look at those comparison operators. Comparison operators are the engine of the query and the syntax is very important. Here's a list of basic operators for equals, contains, has, starts with, before, after, etc. As you can see, those operators are either single or triple digits with capital letters. Very important, this syntax. In addition to these, we also have sort of inverse operators, many of them starting with an X that refers to the opposite, such as does not contain, does not start with, etc. Others indicate on or before, on or after, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. See the resources below this video for an easy to reference table and check out the QuickBase documentation if you need even more detailed information. But what happens if we want to include multiple operators or multiple conditions in our query strings? Using AND, OR, OR operators between individual query strings allows you to fine-tune the results to include multiple conditions. 
So just like in our report, if we choose all of the conditions to be true, it gives us this AND option where we can choose our first query string and add it to a second query string. In order to compose something like this in a query, field ID 22 equals closed and field ID 13 is on or after the first of the year, we would use a capital A-N-D between those two query strings. Similarly, on a report, we might set a condition where any of them are true and we get that OR option. For our query, field ID 22 equals closed or canceled, we put that capital OR in between our two query strings. But what happens when we get even more complicated? Combining both OR and AND into our formula query. Just like on a report, we can nest or group different items together as OR or AND conditions. So field ID 22 equals closed OR canceled and field ID 13 is on or after the first of the year. This is how it would look in our query string. Notice where I've got that set of parentheses. Very important to indicate that grouping, that those should be assessed together and then separately included with the additional query. And then if we change up our groupings, we get a different outcome. When field ID 22 equals closed or field ID 22 equals closed and field ID 13 is after the first. When we shift those parentheses, the outcome changes. Very important to include those parentheses exactly where you need them, just as you would on a report filter with those nested or indented conditions. Now that we've covered the basics for constructing your query, let's discuss a few best practices. QuickBase offers several best practices when it comes to building your queries. Since filters are processed sequentially, your query should eliminate the most records with the first filters. Try to use scholar fields or manual input fields. These are the ones that people type into, choose, or directly interact with, rather than derived fields like summary or formula fields. Derived fields must do additional queries, permission checks, and calculation before they can be evaluated against your query. And whenever you can, Use exact matches when building your filter criteria. Using is equal to as your matching operator will be faster than contains. Now let's look at a few areas where we can use these queries. The most exciting addition yet has been the formula field. Formula queries allow you to easily query your QuickBase data and return the values directly in a field. What's even better is that you can also take advantage of all the other formula functions and field references. Here's an example of a query in a formula. Using the get records, we pull a query where field ID 15 is on or after the start date, and then we get the size or count of the records returned in that list that match that query. Here's another example of a formula query using many more options. We can also use queries in pipeline search steps because occasionally the built-in query options just don't cut it. Advanced queries come to our rescue. On a pipeline step that performs a search or query, there's a section to write advanced queries that's located on the search step. You can only use advanced queries or the built-in queries, not both. So the standard query section, if you've got anything there, you'll need to remove it all before you can use the advanced queries. Here's a zoomed in look at that advanced query where we're writing it just as I've demonstrated. A set of single curly brackets with the field ID, period, operator, period, and then our value to compare against and a set of single quotations. In pipelines, it's also possible to reference other fields using that Jinja variable, which is included in that set of double curly brackets. Just be sure that that particular field has already been pulled into your pipeline. 
in a previous step so that way you can use it on that query. In addition to formulas and pipelines, queries can also be used to gather lists of records that will be displayed or processed through several different advanced techniques. I won't go into a whole lot of detail on these, but I do want to give you a sense of what they are. The first is the URL string. This is an example where a report with query ID 1 is being modified to only show records where field ID 22 is equal to closed. Note also that for this use, the single quotes have been URL encoded into these percent %27s, allowing them to pass through the URL. Here's another look at a URL string with a query from the QuickBase DoQuery API documentation. Next, we have XML. XML is a programming language. To use a query here, we start with an opening query tag and end with a closing query tag, but the query itself remains the same. And here's another look at the query in a full XML request that would be used in something like a webhook. The last I'll mention is JSON. JSON is another programming language. Here we have a key of where that is set to a value containing the query. Here it is in a query API example from the QuickBase RESTful API documentation. As you can see, there are so many ways that you can use queries throughout your application, whether that's through formula queries, pipelines, or these advanced use cases. I've had my fair share of queries returning the wrong values or no values at all. When composing the query in a formula in particular, it can be especially tricky to get all the formatting just right. If you are experiencing issues, it may be for one of these reasons. That proper query format hasn't been used. Remember, that's that FID period operator period value in those single quotes all inside of those curly brackets. So your value to compare against may not be enclosed in those single quotes. The query string may not be enclosed in those curly brackets. You may have included extra spaces within the query string, which you do not want. Or that comparison operator isn't separated from the field ID with the period. You could also be using the wrong field ID. You want to make sure to double check those field properties and that you've got the right field ID for the right table. There could also be missing or mismatched parentheses when using those AND, OR, OR operators. The comparison operator could be wrong, misspelled, or not capitalized. Remember those operators need to match exactly the table that I shared. When you're combining multiple queries with those AND or OR operators, you also want to make sure that those are fully capitalized. There could also be scenarios where the field type of the FID that you're using and the value you're comparing against are not compatible for comparison, such as a user field being compared against a numeric field. And as in one of those last examples that I shared from advanced queries, if you're utilizing the query string in a URL, parts of it may need to be URL encoded. For the most up-to-date resources, demos, and other reference materials, please check the link in the text below. That's all I have for you in this Query Writing 101 lesson. Next step, check out one of those demos and get to work on writing your own queries. If you liked this video, there's a whole lot more going on over at quickbasejunkie.com slash training. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the first lesson. If you found this video helpful, let me know. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Bye for now.